And I think that's probably actually one thing I failed at quite epically in many in multiple times in my life was was not creating a business. Like what I've always said about myself is like like I'm an artist who understands numbers. And so I created stuff out of my inspiration, but wasn't able to turn the corner. You were able to turn the corner. And I want to speak a little bit more. I want to ask you more questions into that because I think a lot of gym owners are trying to turn the corner. And for various reasons, me having some experience there myself are not able to turn the corner. So I want to zero in on maybe those four things you brought up in that last little monologue, which was fantastic. I want to talk first about price point because ultimately what makes a business able to run is its sustainable profitability. And what allows a CEO to be a CEO is the profitability that allows people to be in their positions where they can do their jobs and you don't have to micromanage everybody or do everything. So an example, when I was running Revolution Parkour, before I sold the company, it was still a very small company and I pretty much did everything. I hired one person to help teach classes, but I would check people in at the front. I would teach the classes. I would do the marketing. I would design the curriculum. I was doing everything at the gym and it didn't allow me to step back and manage the business from a bigger perspective because I had to run the day to day. I had to be integrally involved in everything we were doing. Once you have the profitability where you can say, hey, here are my instructors, they're teaching class. Then it seems to me that you can step back and then see it from a bigger picture. That comes from profitability because you have to you have to have the money to pay somebody to do that. I might disagree with you here a little bit. Um, Fantastic. I love disagreements. Tell me why you disagree. And then uh, I do want to get to the price point thing because there's an important question there. Sure. Yeah. So there's some chicken in the egg here. Or, or Yeah. Like what comes first? Um, like, do you have to be profitable to make the systems or do you have to have the systems to become profitable? Um, and you know, your point was like, you have to have the cash on hand to be able to pay the people to do the things so that you can back up and run the business. And yeah, totally. But what happens when you're not profitable and you, you're listening to some podcast that tells you that you have to do this to become profitable, you know, what you do is, um, like looking at your business, kind of the first big step is figure out what is the action that's creating the value, you know, and that's, I'm, I'm going to stick with parkour gyms here. That's teaching the classes and also getting members in the door and signing them up. Right. So you have, you have a fulfilling your service, you have a marketing and you have a sales, like those kind of three big things. Um, the things that you're probably doing as an owner, um, you're probably doing a lot more than that. You know, you're probably posting on like every single social media channel possible, the thing you're posting is probably not targeted and mostly just artistic rather than like strategic. Um, you're probably personally in there sweeping the floor and like getting all the hair out of all the little cracks and like, you know, researching how much sand weighs so that you can hold down your block, right? <laughs> um, that's a real world example of a past CEO who told me what they were doing with their day. <laughs> and so what you then do from that position is you look at all of your tasks and you find the tasks or tasks that are the lowest value, the ones that really aren't moving the needle. It's just you treading water, kind of spending your time for the day. And that could be cleaning, honestly, that could be posting on all the different social medias. And if you can find someone to bring in and just like, you're, you're the person who's going to clean the floors, right? I'm going to pay you what, 15 something, whatever an hour um, to do that. But that's going to free up five hours a week for me, the CEO or whoever. And those five hours, you bet your butt that I'm going to be able to earn more or create more value um, from my new freed up time than I'm paying that, that person sweeping the floor. So whether that's you dive into marketing and you fill in those spaces in the, in the gym that you don't have, and you do that through learning how to market, executing it, and then getting better. Um, or maybe, you know, let's just magically your gym is full, but you're not profitable. That gives you time to look at your accounting. That gives you time to scrutinize your price points um, and to like create those, those hierarchical structures that matter. And if you can free yourself of those tedious day-to-day -day things that actually don't move the needle and you can give those to team members, um, that's when you slowly lift yourself, you know, out of, of the water that you're under and you can focus on what matters. Um, but you can't do that until you systematize, 
delegate and focus on the, the things that actually do that. And oftentimes you need to start that process well before you're profitable. Okay, so we 100% agree on this, by the way, for, for sure. Where, where what's not clear to me is your perspective on, on how you make that shift. So imagine your gym is losing $1,000 a month, right? Mm -hmm. You're running that, your cash flow runway is like being burned up because you, I don't know, like, I don't know, maybe you maxed out your credit to build the gym. You're now losing money per month. And now you're like, dang, uh, the last thing I want to do is hire someone and pay them 15 an hour to clean the gym. Because not because I don't want to, not because I don't think my time is better served other places, but because I don't literally have the positive cash flows to pay for this. Mm -hmm. So how that seems to be the, the catch 22 that a lot of business owners get stuck in. And I've been stuck in that myself. So as a gym owner, how do you, what advice do you give to someone who's in that pinch? Who's like, yeah, I want to make the jump, but I don't feel like I have the money to make the jump. Is it taking out a loan? Cause now you're taking on more risk or more leverage. Or is it work harder or is it, you know, what is your answer? What is your advice for that? Yeah. Step one is get help, you know, find a mentor. Um, you know, if, if you want to reach out to me, I'll give you some advice or, or, you know, step one is figure out how you got yourself into this mess and get a little bit of assistance because clearly the way that you've been approaching it, you know, as the way that you've set it up, Adam, you're, you're in a total time crunch, you're in debt, you're paying off whatever, and you can't do it. So that's my step one. My step two is on you, you, you raise two giant obstacles. One is that you don't have the cash flow because you're in debt. And the other one is you have debt of time, right? You just don't have the free time. So if we look at the time side, if, if you're a gym owner, whose total day is just completely filled up, um, I, I guarantee that you're doing multiple hours of stuff per day that you could just totally stop doing right now and you would not notice a difference so you know what what those things are you can find out by doing just like a one day two day time analysis on yourself and that could look like every 15 minutes you just take out your notes on your phone and you type up what you're doing in that moment and then a few days of that you'll have just basically like a map of what you're focusing on every day and especially if you do this with a mentor who doesn't have the like filter of perception that you do, they can see things a little differently. When they look at your time, they'll be like, you know, Jimmy, you're spending all this time, like moving stuff around in your gym to make it cool. Or like you're setting up for these competitions that you have coming up, you know, and it's taking you all this time, or you're, you're spending all this time on TikTok reels when like actually your engagement on TikTok is not justifying the time that you're spending on it. So let's cut, cut, cut. These are the things that you need to focus on and we're going to drill into those, right? So you free up your time by saying no, by saying no to stuff. Uh, there's a great book called Essentialism by Greg McCowan. And, and it's basically like say no to most things and get real clear and yes with the essential things that you have to do. So that's my solution. Number one is do a time analysis, get someone to help you cut out the crap that's not working. Number two um, if you're, in, <laughs> you set it up as you're in debt, you know, your cash flow is basically shot. Um, hopefully if you free up your time and you start doing more of the thing that's working, you'll increase your cash flow. Um, sort of by definition, if you focus on the thing that's creating value, it's sort of unreasonable to not see more value coming out of that. So I would like to say now you have some more cash flow, but let's say even if you didn't, you still are underwater, you're paying, you know, whatever, your cash flow is just completely shot. Um, you know, now if you're looking at someone like Dave Ramsey, who has the debt uh, snowball, you know, you you pay off the littlest, okay. easiest things first and you you like let that accumulate and you and you go. That's one way to look at it. Another way to look at it is, you know, if you look at all the accounts that you have to pay off, um, like this one is $500 a month and that one's $500 a month. They both are that much to service that debt a month. But one is I only have $2,000 left to pay that off. And the other one is I have $100,000 left to pay that off. The one that's $2,000 and it's the same monthly debt service as the other, if you can pay those down first, you, you're basically purchasing back that cash flow for not as much money as like some of your other debt. So if you can figure out which cash flow is the best to purchase 
act for yourself first. You know, you could either save money to do that to free up your cash flow. You could get like a debt consolidation loan or a loan from a friend with more favorable terms. You know, there's if you look at it like an accountant um, and you see like where can I free up cash flow just based on the numbers, um, now you can solve that problem in that way. So if you do both of these, you start thinking like a like a CEO, you start thinking like a CFO. And you get discipline with your time, discipline with your focus, and then discipline with your numbers. Like, if, if if I was someone's mentor, like I could get them out of that, you know, relatively soon. And and I'm not like even trained to do most of that stuff. It's just like common sense, and it's not common sense actually. It's because I it took me years to learn it. It's just logical, you know. But it, it can often be like pretty buried under the numbers or buried into the stuff that you think you're focusing on. So I get how it could be hard. 